Hello, mutants. I'm Mutisha, the movie goddess, and you're watching Mutant TV. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 Welcome back, dear friends. It's time for another edition of the Mondo Magic Hour. I am your host, as always, Strebo. This week, we're going to talk about VHS. Video cassette. What one plays in a VCR. No, not a beta. That's a special shout out to you, biological father out there <laughs> across the country. Not beta. VHS, the dominant medium of the past two decades. Well, you know, almost a decade ago now. But for two decades, it was the dominant medium. I'm hoping Blu-ray is going to be the new VHS, so to speak, in that it will be around for a long, long time, so I don't have to keep upgrading. But this week, we're going to take a look at my VHS collection. This is a special uh, guest blogger edition contribution for the VHS Graveyard run by the one and only Johnny Brento from Mutantville.com. This one's for you, buddy. Here's our VHS collection here at uh, in the Strebo's Secret Vault. For uh, our upcoming John Carpenter interview, The Eyes of Laura Mars. That's actually a pretty cool cover. Now, a statement I made recently, and I think I'm going to do a comparative video later on, or a compare and contrast video, if you will, for uh, Dr. Jeff Clock, who I know loves that statement, um, to compare the cover art from DVDs, Blu-rays, and VHS to prove that, indeed, the VHS cover art was the greatest cover art of all time, <laughs> as far as the, these movies are concerned. So I'm just going to show you my collection. It's a crazy eclectic mix here because, mind you, I've been collecting VHS for 20 plus years. You know, at this point, I try to only buy videos if it's not a, if the movie or program, whatever it is, is not available in another format. Like this is a good example, Fangoria's Weekend of Horrors. This isn't on DVD anywhere. If you want to see this old convention footage with guys like. Wes Craven and Robert e. England and Toby Hooper. Um, you got to check the. You got to pick these up, and the only place you can find them is on VHS. Speaking of which, you know that I'm a filmmaker. At least some of you do, anyway. Um, Hearts of Darkness, Francis Ford Coppola. This was one of the first, if not the first, documentary I ever saw on filmmaking, way back in the day. Uh, released in '92, I probably saw it. In 95 I guess I wasn't that much on top of it maybe 96 but about Francis Ford Coppola's journey into the heart of madness to make Apocalypse Now making a movie that he didn't have an ending for but anyway I can't get pulled off on into talking about all this crap I've got to show you some good stuff kind of move through the bulk and then we'll slow down and settle into a, a cool ending but anyway so here's some good good ones to get you going right off the top Tom Savini. Now you can see this is kind of a ghetto cover, but what makes this cool is I got this from Tom Savini. Okay, he had he had made this, or somebody made it for him, and he signed that bad boy for me, and it's got the screen grades. Because I believe this was originally only available on laser disc. Is I mean, is that right? It was only on laser disc. So if you wanted to see it, you had to have a laser disc. Now talk about a dead format. There was one that never quite never quite caught on. I thought it was pretty cool though. But because that one's signed by he and comes directly from the man, makes it very, very cool piece of my VHS collection. But anyway, some of these others, they're just not available on DVD. Hardcore logo, um, distributed by Quentin Tarantino's Rolling Thunder Pictures. I really dug that series. Some of those movies are still not on DVD. Ooh, where to go next? Hmm, here's a big box. Village of the Damned. An unnerving chiller. Ooh, I need to put this in my uh, need to put this in my stack of stuff to watch for the October challenge because I haven't seen this one yet either. So I'm gonna set that one to the side. Oh, before I get going too far, uh, 
I'll show you one more documentary. The Masters of Comic Book Art. This one is really cool because I got this from the guy that actually made it available on DVD. Um, hosted by Harlan Ellison. They talked to a lot of artists. Frank Miller, Bernie Wrightson, uh, Mobius. Uh, a lot of guys, but anyway, this is one to get. Dave Sim, Jack Kirby. Uh, even Steve D Ditko appears on it, though you don't see him anywhere. You just hear this crazy stuff that he wrote out and it's like it's like a manifesto for the Punisher if the Punisher wrote out his manifesto this is what it would sound like Steve Ditko wrote that shit out so you need to check that out now his Mr. A character how there there's only right and wrong you're either good or you're bad there is no in between uh, so that was pretty cool Mr. A check that out now here's some thing the cool thing about VHS is a lot of guilty pleasures involved here this is what I call the Full Moon Avengers set. <laughs> Dr. Mordred, Mandroid, and Invisible movies. These two are, are linked together, but uh, this one not so much. But they're, they're the little superhero take that the Full Moon uh, company did. Um, Dr. Mordred is very much a Doctor Strange ripoff. Cool stuff. Mandroid, that dude controlling the exoskeleton. Amityville's Curse. Now here's a rare one. Uh, Redeemer, Son of Satan. This is a this is a, a weird one. This movie is The Omen meets I don't know Halloween or something. It's just weird. Uh, crappy cover art though. Here's a better classic cover for slashers. Humongous. See a little better there. That's a creepy cover. Yeah. Now here's a rare one. I should set some of these rare ones to the side here. Show you some of the less rare first. You hear that overhead? Black helicopters. They're coming for you too. <laughs> Life force. Not rare, but I just love this cover. I mean, this is classic 80s poster design at work. It's so simple, it just combines two completely, you know, innocuous elements, planet Earth and an eyeball, close up of an eyeball. But it does it in a way that it makes the eye look like a UFO hovering over the planet. You know, and this has alien life form in it. Crazy movie, one of my favorites. Got to see it Retro Phantasma. Carolina Theater. Awesome experience. That movie plays like a son of a bitch. Here's another one. Not rare, but I just love the cover. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Again, they just took the sh silhouette shot of a family. Same picture down below. A little creative design between the two. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. There you go classic cover art in action created by some kind of an artist I don't know who did it these are the real unsung artists of that era everybody knows who the directors are and the stars but man the poster artists those are the guys <laughs> never got enough credit here's the fury I uh, hate this is one I got from uh, a pawn shop which is why it has that horrible ugly sticker on there and I really hate that because those are so hard to peel off Pawn shops have no pity on those. They put them on everything. Um, you know, some of the stores like GameFly or GameSpot. Yeah, GameSpot used to do it. Uh, I used to argue with them at the store. I'm like, man, do not put the stickers on there. Witch Hunt, starring Dennis Hopper, which is a sequel to. Uh, what's the name of the one? Cast a Deadly Spell, starring Fred Ward, based on. H.P. Lovecraft's writings, but it has nothing to do with him. Uh, but Fred Ward stars as <laughs> Lovecraft, and this one it's Dennis Hopper as Lovecraft, and he's a detective, you know, investigating bizarre Cthulhu cults and stuff like that. Really cool, unheard of, hidden gem, those, both of those, hidden gems, definitely. Wink. <laughs> what up, CG? Andy Warhol presents Dracula. The 
great Udo Kier, <laughs> the madman himself. There's some crazy Udo Kier stories out there. You have to check out Mikey Diablo's recount of his encounter with Udo Kier at the Horror Find convention in 2007, where Udo Kier was on a drunken rampage. Allegedly. It was allegedly on a drunken rampage. Because I don't have it on camera, but we do have Udo Kier on camera. Actually, check out our interview with M Michael Gross, and uh, you get to see an Udo Kier cameo. Who knew? Michael Gross, Udo Kier, anyway, Paul Morrissey, Blood for Dracula, <clears throat> or Andy Warhol's Dracula, whose name was just attached to try to sell the series, but very cool. Ooh, there's a rare one. I better set that to the side. There's a not-so-rare <laughs> spontaneous combustion, which I still haven't watched, a Toby Hooper movie starring Brad Dorif. Hmm. I don't see any other big names that jump out at me, but Toby Hooper, Brad Dorif, I mean, can't be all that bad. I'll set that aside for my possible 31 new watches. Oh, here's a cool one. The Cinder. Still not on DVD. You can only get that on VHS, but you uh, VHS hunters out there are well aware of that. I just turned Brento onto that movie a couple weeks ago. Good stuff. You can still you can find it on the cheap. I don't know about eBay, but you can if you find if you have a store nearby that sells VHS, you can usually find it. <clears throat> oh, here's one, a cool one. George R. Romero's Martin. I always like the one that because it's got the teeth and the razor blades in the picture. And if you're familiar with the movie Martin, you'll know that's uh, part of the story, part of the theme. Is it reality? Is it illusion? Is it delusion? Is it vampirism? What is it? And that's the great thing about it, because really, Romero leaves that up to the viewers. Very, very cool movie. I've got piles of VHS here that are just falling all around me. Uh, another cool one. Beyond the Door, Mario Bava. Beyond the Door 2, actually. Mario Bava's last movie. Uh, I have seen it. I don't remember a lot from it. I just it was atmospheric. I'll definitely, I'll give it that. Atmospheric and creepy. Um, and uh, Daria Nicolodi, Daria Argento's star, one-time ingenue, one-time wife, <clears throat> stars in it for Bava, and that's ironic because. Bava was no doubt an influence on Argento, and even though the two worked together. Later on, when uh, Bava did cinematography for uh, Argento's Inferno, Beyond the Door 2. Mario Bava, very cool. I might need to rewatch that since I can't remember it, but I think part of that is just me wiping it out of my brain for some reason. Because it, it, it's okay, but it's not great. Arena! It's the UFC on Mars in space. <laughs> Very cool. It's like Captain America versus I don't know whoever that dude is, Red Skull. I think that's only now available on DVD. Here's another one that's not rare at all, Dracula. But this one, this is a cool version because it has the Philip Glass score. Uh, because famously the movie didn't have a score originally basket case crazy Frank Henenlotter now these are actually available on DVD and I have this one on DVD hmm now that's one I can compare I can use in my video to compare and contrast <laughs> Another not rare one, Stephen King's Salem's Lot. But which version is this? This is the. I don't know if it. It's the movie version. That's why I have this because I have the miniseries version on the DVD. But this is the movie version, so I get to have two of them. And again, we'll have to compare the cover artwork on those. I was a kid once, 
Jacob Tutu and the Hooded Fang. <laughs> and, uh, it's not the peanut butter solution, but it's pretty crazy. Speaking of being a kid, now one cool thing about being a kid is you always want to see cool cartoons. It's cool to run across some neat ones. Fire and Ice, based on Frazetta, written by Roy Thomas, I believe. Roy Thomas and Jerry Conway. Yeah. Two prolific writers for the Marvel Comics during the 70s, late 60s. Frazetta. Based on his characters and designs and artwork. Awesome stuff. And Ralph Baschke. I mean, that's just a... Amazing team. Baschke's Lord of the Rings. Another amazing movie. This movie had some scary shit in it when you see it as a kid. This is probably what gave me all my uh, night terrors I had when I was a little kid. During Lord of the Rings. Seeing the Nazgul... That was some scary stuff, especially when they come into his uh, into the room and chop the bed up, or when they're lurking down the highway. All scary stuff. Return of the King. I don't think these, this is on DVD yet. This was the uh, was it Rankin Bass? Yeah, really cool version. From one war to another, combat shock. <laughs> That's a very different. Oh yeah, I have to admit, haven't seen this yet. I've started it a couple times, but I've just um, fallen asleep or something, or just didn't have time. Just whatever reason. So I need to set it aside into the uh, possible watch for the October movie challenge. Now here's a cool. One. God told me to. That's a really interesting cover. This is uh this might be Larry Cohen's best work God told me to though I'm a fan of It's Alive which is pretty good but this this movie is really neat it's Cronenbergian in points now this is one that could use some digital adjusting you know how like George Lucas likes to do <laughs> to Star Wars you know every five years now um, and because they need to change one effect and that's the effect of but anyway I can't tell you without spoiling the movie obviously but God told me to Definitely check that out if you're looking for cool uh, late 70s, early 80s type horror. And this is more, also more psychological and has weird, a little bit of surreal stuff going on into it. So if you're into surrealist horror, David Cronenberg kind of vibe, um, definitely check that out. Oh, this is uh, worth pointing out because I got this from uh, attending Retro Phantasma. Um, they were giving them out. Uh, Jim, the program coordinator there, is like, I've given away my old VHS, you can have them. And I was like, holy shit, God told me to. Awesome. And it has this cool cover. Now, this is interesting. One thing, this movie actually had, uh, well, it was Annie Kaufman's first movie appearance. He's he's in it as a policeman in the parade sequence. So, it's worth noting for that, because the Andy Kaufman appearance alone crazy movie okay here's a rare one the night porter we're gonna kind of move into the rarer ones now uh, for a long time this wasn't on DVD and this is one of those crazy weird Nazi exploitation movies but it's I don't want to say it has a heart because it's very perverse but it's one of those that can get get away with being art house and very art nouveau and you know, risque and pushing sexual boundaries and that kind of stuff. Speaking of pushing sexual boundaries, how about Hercules in the Haunted World? Now, I'm not sure if this is a bootleg or what because it's sinister cinema and uh, it's typed out on the side. I don't know if they had a deal because I got this as part of a, a eBay lot. Um, about five or six VHS. I couldn't find them all though. Um, they're scattered out. I've got VHS everywhere, so you have to forgive me on that one. Um, but I bought them all as a lot and uh, a bunch of Mario Baba. So hopefully that's not a bootleg. And actually, I still haven't watched that all the way through. I should set that to the side because that's pretty 
anything bava buddy i mean come on all right here's a cool one yeah well a lot of people are hip to this by now but in case you're not night of the demon the best bigfoot movie out there it's pretty wicked bigfoot attacks rips people apart uh, does other unspeakable acts that I'm not going to repeat just in case my mom watches this again, but I hope she doesn't. Uh, yeah, Night of the Demon. Check that one out. Speaking of an unspeakable acts, Fritz the Cat. Uh, this is probably on DVD somewhere, but uh, <laughs> very risque, so to speak. <laughs> I have to watch that again. <laughs> that looks really cool. Here's a good one. The Resurrected, based on H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, is the case of Charles Dexter Ward, or is it the Curious Case of Charles Dexter Ward? I can never remember that proper title for that. But starring Chris Sarandon, directed, written, directed by Dan O'Bannon. Did he write it? No, Brent Friedman. Okay, so it was just directed by O'Bannon. So that's cool. That's a cool looking cover. Anything based on Lovecraft is very, very cool. Alright, last few. We already went over the Eyes of Laura Mars and The Shining because you know I'm a Kubrick fan. Oh, I guess before this last last little horror haul, so to speak. Let me go, I'm gonna go into a tangent because I know VHS collectors are into more than just just horror VHS. They're also into, you know, action, adventure, that kind of stuff. So, I've got a little mix here of, uh, I just grabbed one or two. <laughs> uh, Kung Fu, Samurai, Western, Sci-Fi, just, just a few, just to give you a taste. Here's what I'm talking about. Return of the Five Deadly Venoms, AKA The Crippled Avengers. Very, very awesome movie. In my mind, and in most Five Deadly Venoms fans' mind, this is the second best Venoms movie, with the best being Five Deadly Venoms, obviously. And they go from China to Japan, The Seven Samurai. I remember for a long time I had this, and I just kept studying it because of uh, George Lucas saying <laughs> that, he, that it was a big inspiration on Star Wars. So anything that he said, I just went out, went and sought him out. Uh, Lucas was a big inspiration on me, obviously, growing up. Seven Samurai. Awesome stuff. Should hold that up a little better. But, yeah. More Kurosawa. Kagamusha. Shadow Warrior, right? Yeah, Shadow Warrior. Um... I just love this Star Wars cover. This is the classic Star Wars poster to me. So having it on VHS, also this is the original version, not one of the edited, changed versions. So if you want to see the real Star Wars kids, this is where you're going to find it on VHS. Well, also, uh, yeah, I mean, they have it on all formats, but, you know, he still screws around with them. As long as he can get away with it. Okay. The John Woo Collection. Do do. Hard boiled the killer. Hard boiled the killer. Doom, 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 doom. Yeah, I was into uh, John Woo back when he was still cool. From the director of Broken Arrow. It's funny how they advertise that. I never noticed that before. There you see Chow Young Fat. You can get those to focus properly. Which hopefully you're turned on to these by now. I mean. I would say John Woo and Robert Rodriguez were the two most influential action directors and maybe Tony Scott of the last you know 20 years. Also James Cameron and a few plenty of others but The Chinatown Kid one of the very few uh, modern contemporary uh, movies by Cheng Che. It was Chang Chao, wasn't it? The director. Heck, I don't know. I don't see it on here, but I thought it was. Yeah, Alexander Fushang. But that's awesome. Awesome movie. If you're into the 70s vibe and you haven't seen that one yet, totally check that one out now. Chao Yun Fat again. Better Tomorrow. 
probably some of the most influential action stuff. And most people don't know it because they 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 didn't get clued in on on this stuff until the Matrix came along and kind of co-opted it all. But you know, you can't hate on the Matrix. That movie was awesome. Here we go. So, cut box. Kirk D Douglas in Champion boxer movie. You know, I'm big on my uh, boxing fighting stuff. And just to prove that. <laughs> Elvis and Kid Galahad. Yes, check it out. It's the, if you want to watch one cool Elvis movie, <laughs> watch the one where he's a boxer. Because you know, Elvis was a black belt under. Uh, Ed Parker in Kempo Karate, you know, he used to wear his outfit and shit. Well, here's another one for you, hey, Charles Bronson. Hard times, I'll knock your block off. Also with James Coburn. Unfortunately, cut box, X rental, mind you. I mean, what are you gonna do? Um, over the years, VHS collectors, you know that a lot of your movies are gonna be X rentals when you find them. So you're gonna be lucky to get a box intact and have everything together without stickers on it. Just here's just one just to show how goofy. But uh, big box Hawk the Slayer, yeah. All right, let's round the round the bin and wrap it up here. So we're gonna go from big box, a couple more cut boxes. Silent Night, Deadly Night. For a while, this was sold out on the. Uh, it's cut together upside down. Um, it was sold out on DVD, so VHS or DVD, it was just hard to find. That's just a cool, creepy. Here comes Santa with his ex. <laughs> Talk about scaring kids right there. That's all it takes. <laughs> that was a movie that had some major impact. Another cut, cut box, Rituals. classic Canadian horror film I do believe survival is horror but it's also kind of a slasher movie too very cool underrated movie I've always wanted to see the unrated version of it the uncut version because the American version had a lot of the gore cut out it's kind of like a deliverance kind of movie as a slasher I mean it's hard to explain but very cool underrated unheard of flick Speaking of slashers, Hell Night Baby, what's up? Two dollars at the local flea market. You you just you never know what you're gonna run across. Some real gems, real classics. Let's round the bend. Mad Max. That's a nice one too. I like that cover. Nice bold cover there. That's another one I can use for my compare and contrast video as well as this series of clamshells starting with the road warrior which has some special editions on it some behind the scenes stuff which if you have the dvd you will know those aren't even on the dvd the dvd is bare bones yep crazy that's just a badass cover though yeah a lot of those one from my good buddy Dr. Savini, Dracula Prince of Darkness. This was the second of the Christopher Dracula Christopher Lee Draculas from Hammer Films. Very cool one at that. Classic stuff. Evil Dead, Dead by Dawn 2. Do that over. Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. Dang. That's just a great cover with the skull, with the eyes. And what a great movie. But so much fun, too. A classic, big influence on me, my interest in martial arts. Enter the Dragon. <laughs> With you know who, Mr. Williams on there, Jim Kelly himself, who we got to release our full interview from him very soon. Last but not least, Shivers. Check that bad boy out, eh? <laughs> to my can Canadian counterparts, Cowboys in Crime, aka they came from within, from one of my all-time favorite horror directors, David Cronenberg. 
he might be at the top. I don't know. A lot of other contenders for that spot. John Carpenter, Stanley Kubrick, Guillermo del Toro, but Cronenberg has a special place. His movies were... They still hold up today, though there are aspects of them that are very dated. Hard to find on VHS, hard to find on DVD. I need a good DVD copy of it. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> Strebo's VHS collection. Thanks for having me, VHS Graveyard. Uh, who knows? I'll probably do another update one day. I have hundreds of these things laying around. Uh, VHS are fun, but I'm starting to dig uh, Blu-ray. Yeah, I'm hoping Blu-ray is the new VHS. So, but I'll always be repping the VHS because uh, they've got the best art out there. What do you want to say? So, next time, I'm going to bring the VHS back for one more episode, if you'll have me. <laughs> and uh, I'll compare and contrast VHS artwork with DVD artwork. And we'll see how it goes. Thanks for having me. This is Strebo. Find me at MutantVille.com. Peace. You're watching Mutant TV.